translating Dharma as a sectarian religion, sectarian in the sense that you make specific claims. If you look at the Mahabharata, for example, or the Bhagavatam, one thing which amazingly is not present, as far as I can tell, anywhere in the Bhagavatam or Mahabharata is a religious institution. Yes. So when you think of Dharma meant the law. For example, uh, for example, we have this uh, belief nowadays that everyone's equal. And of course, there are some ways in which people are equal, and there are obviously some ways in which people are not equal. Mm. So, but that's a metaphysical claim. That's not an empirical claim. So we claim that in a just society, in a society that promotes justice, um, there should be equal justice under the law. That's metaphysical. So is that religious? No one thinks that democracy is based on a religious claim, but it is. So democracy is, it is not a, let's say, just the belief that a type of you. Uh, utilitarian belief that we should promote the greatest good for the greatest number of people, and therefore let's use social science, psychology, economics, and uh, neurology, and, and everything, and let's try to build a society which brings the greatest happiness to the greatest number of people. Um, it, what if it turned out that democracy doesn't do that? Of course, no one's willing to even talk about that. There, there are no serious discussions about that. Everyone just says, well, democracy is not very good, but it's history. It, it's the best system that, that we've ever seen in history. And of course, the people that say that, generally what they all have in common is they've never seriously studied history. Oh, So, so Tomara, it's just... just like, sorry. Yeah. So when you said that <laughs> democracy is a religious, uh, democracy is based on a religious claim, you're using the word religious in the sense of well, metaphysical, we, that there is no way we can empirically demonstrate everyone's equality. It's more of a conception or intuition that we human beings have. It's a metaphysical intuition. Now, Krishna and the Gita speaks very strongly about our equality, but in a special sense. It's not an equality that destroys hierarchy because... If, if you destroy hierarchy, it leads to chaos, and then generally you get tyranny. And so generally, when you, when, you, when you try to smash hierarchies, you generally get worse hierarchies. But anyway, uh, so... That's um, a very strike, sorry, that's a very striking point, that today's equality, rather than focusing more on gaining equality, focuses on destroying hierarchy. And yeah. So... Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And um, but it, but it, it, it's I mean, Thomas Jefferson in the DOI, the Declaration of Independence, he he stated that he and his fellow authors that it's um, we hold these truths to be self-evident that people are created equal, created and down by the creator. So Thomas Jefferson directly uh, bases his theory of democracy on a, you could say, a, a religious fact or a metaphysical fact, because if you say there's a creator and the creator has given us certain rights and therefore no king, no tyrant can take those rights away because they're given by the creator. That was the point. And so that, you know, it may not be a sectarian religious claim, but I think it's arguably a religious claim. So if you take away the goose that laid the golden egg, if you take away a creator, then, and you say we're equal, what does that even mean? We live in a time when uh, thinking is really an endangered activity. I mean, people don't think. And so everyone says, okay, we're equal, but how do you know that's true? That's my simple question. You say we're all equal. How do you know that? Empirically, you can't prove it. So how do you know it? 